So today I want to examine how, um, how conservation is, used, is utilized as a means of the reconstruction of identity in contempor contemporary Israeli society. Through the concept of discur discursive ambivalence, I want to claim that the examination of the conservation of the clock tower square in Jaffa, Israel, illuminates the method through which conservation is used to nullify the historic and ideological context that allowed for the site's initial development. So this is the, this is the site that I'm going to talk about, the clock tower square in Jaffa. It is located on the, on the border between Jaffa and Tel Aviv, which actually since uh, 1948 are one city and function today as the, metro as the metropolitan center of Israel. The square was originally, originally built at the, end of the, at the end of the 19th century and was re renovated and conservated to what it, what it is in, how you see it in this picture in recent years. So I'll give a short summary of what you can see here. Here you see the building that was, it, that was built, first built as in the, at the end of the 19th century as a police compound. Um, and today is a five-star hotel. Um, here this facade that you see here was part of what was built as the governor's palace and was um, destroyed in the 1940 war when Israel was founded. And in recent years, it was decided to just build, the, to rebuild the, the facade of the, the facade of the building, um, reminding the passerby of the aesthetic monumental dominance of this building prior to its destruction. And in the middle, you see here the clock tower, which was built in 1907. Um, in celebration of the 25th year of the reign of the Ottoman Sultan Abd al Hamid II. So, in the next few minutes, what I want to do, I want to kind of try to deconstruct the, the conservation that we see here and so, to, so that we can and ask what does the conservation of this site, what does, what does it want us to remember? What do we what do we remember? What do we remember about the past of the site when we walk here? And maybe even more importantly, what does the conservation of the site want us to forget about this site's history? So, in order to, to do that, I want to first briefly discuss Jaffa's symbolism in Israeli society in relation to the city of Tel Aviv, which is right nearby, as I said. <clears throat> so, so. In Israeli Zionist culture, Tel Aviv is understood to be the negation of Jaffa. Tel Aviv is depicted as a modern city that was built from the sand, meaning from scratch, and evolving quickly into a modern urban center characterized by its broad promenades. And sorry, here you can see the picture of Tel Aviv in the beginning of the 20th century uh, from postcards. So you can see it has, it was, it's, it's thought of a city with broad promenades very clean and many cultural establishments. In negation, in, in negation, Jaffa is depicted, and here is a picture of Jaffa roughly from the same from the same period. Jaffa is depicted as a backward city full of poverty and crime, built with narrow and filthy alleys. In this respect, the representation of Jaffa as the negation of Tel Aviv may in fact be understood in the wider context of the Zionist aspiration to depict itself as a national indigenous movement. The depiction of Jaffa as a degenerate city went hand in hand with the attempt to depict the Palestinians as temporary, temporary, temporary residents of the land who were not able to take care of it and were now to be relieved of this responsibility by the rightful owners of the land who are, in the Zionist perspective, the Jews. Thus, while Tel Aviv symbolizes the advent of processes of modernism to the region, Jaffa symbolizes the poverty and backwardness Zionism attached to the Palestinian culture. The capturation of Tel Aviv as the negation of Jaffa is perhaps best explained through the picture that you see here, which assumedly documents the foundation of Tel Aviv in 1909, that in 1909 in a lottery in which the lots of us to become Tel Aviv were allotted to their future owners who are all assembled in the middle of the picture. In the picture, it seems self-evident that Tel Aviv, soon to become a, a modern, very central city um, in, in a very few years, was, was built in the middle of nowhere, literally replacing the sand dunes which once dominated the landscape, which you can see in the picture. 
Jaffa is nowhere to be seen and ostensibly has nothing to do with this his historic event. <clears throat> However, the story of the clock tower square reveals a different story about the relations between Jaffa and Tel Aviv. The square was first built at the end of the 19th century as a culmination of a process that began in the mid 19th century in which Jaffa developed into a modern cosmopolitan economic, cultural, and political center of Palestine. The clock tower square was built as a new monumental entrance that consists a new monumental entrance to Jaffa that, um, that consisted of a um, central mosque. And you can see its, its minaret over here. And of course, the police compound and everything else that I talked about earlier. Um, sorry. Um, in this respect, the clock tower square symbolized the expeditious pr process of expand processes of expansion that Jaffa went through in this, peri in this period, characterized by the building of new neighborhoods that were built according to modern principles. And actually, Tel Aviv was, was, was first built as one of these neighborhoods of, of, of Jaffa. The Clock Tower Square symbolized the cosmopolitan nature of the city, in which the prosperity of the city was largely due to the continuing co cooperation between Palestinians and Jews. For example, many of the buildings built in the Clock Tower Square were designed and financed by Jews living in and around the city. As I will attempt, attempt to demonstrate, the conservation plan completely ignored the modern and, and cosmopolitan characteristic of Jaffa. Uh, of Jaffa. And instead, the conservation of Jaffa in general, and, and of the Clock Tower Square in particular, may be seen as a culmination of a long process that overlooked the modern past of Jaffa. A most important stage in the process was the annexation of Jaffa to Tel Aviv following the 1948 war. <clears throat> following the foundation of Israel and the consequent annexation of Jaffa to Tel Aviv, the clock tower square stood in the midst of the crossfire between Jews and Palestinians. Thus, for example, the governor's, um, the governor's house was bombed and destroyed. And here's on, on this picture, you can see how it looked when it was built, very monumentous building, a very, very dominant building. And after it was found in 1948, and for many years after that, you can see the, the last remnants of, the, of, of that facade that, was, that are still, that were just, that, that were retained in the middle of the clock tower square. Um, um, so, and the, 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 decision, the decision to retain the remains of the governor's palace in the square can be perceived as an act of the construction of heritage in and of, in and of itself. In the mid-1990s, mid a long process of the conservation of the Clock Tower Square began. However, the conservation plan of the Clock Tower Square did not focus on the historic narrative attached to it as a space symbolizing Jaffa as a modern urban center. Instead, the architect in charge of the conservation plan decided to focus on the physical function of the square as a junction between three arteries, arteries connecting Jaffa to three central, central cities in Palestine at the turn of the 20th century, one being the road to Jerusalem, another the road to Nablus, and the third the road to Gaza. Um, thus, he reduced the historic function of the square into a space whose importance lies solely in its ability to connect between other spaces. In relation to the wider plans of urban regeneration of Jaffa, the conservation of the clock tower square promoted the transformation of Jaffa into a lucrative tourist de destination detached from any historic narrative. According to Rodney Harrison's definition, this, de this decision can be understood as an expression of absent heritage, symbolizing both the heritage of Jaffa as the modernizing cosmopolitan city and the heritage of the city as the symbol of the Palestinian debacle. Thus, the clock tower square came to serve as an embodiment of the ambivalence existing in Israeli identity between its aspiration to perceive itself as a society whose construction was contrary to the local Palestinian culture, while at the same time bearing evidence to the past of the region as one in which there existed a thriving culture which promoted the cooperation between Palestinians and Jews. The conservation of the clock tower square, which was implemented as part of a plan to resuscitate the city after years of neglect, should be interpreted as a means to contend with this ambivalence. In order to understand how the decision to focus solely, solely on the physical aspects of the clock tower square 
as a method to contend with the ambivalence imbued in the clock tower square as a symbol of Jaffa, as a modern cosmopolitan city, and as the negation of Tel Aviv, I will make use of Zygmunt Bauman's terminology of, of, of discursive ambivalence. Sorry. <clears throat> Bauman suggested that while modern societies attempt to create dichotomous social definitions that allow to differentiate between insiders and outsiders in society, there are always groups that do not adhere to this strict categorization and thus challenge the, 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 the dichotomous perception of reality. Bauman claimed that in order to preserve dichotomous social structures, hegemonic groups strive to ignore and erase the presence of these groups that serve as a potential threat to their social dominance. In this vein, the focus on the physical aspects of the clock tower square was only one example of various other conservation acts which ignored the heritage of Jaffa as a modern cosmopolitan urban center. For example, for example, different signs that explain the importance of the different historic buildings of the square fail to explain their significance in Jaffa's um, transformation into a modern cosmopolitan city at the turn of the 20th century, or of the impact the cooperation between Jews and Palestinians had on the construction of the square and on the modernization of Jaffa in general. No sign describes the various social, educational, and municipal functions of the various buildings, nor the Jewish-Palestinian cooperation in designing and erecting these buildings. Thus, in order to reinforce the symbolism of the picture of the foundation of Tel Aviv, the conservation of Jaffa serves to undermine the symbolism, the symbolism of Jaffa as a modern city, even when this symbolism, symbolism is directly connected to the role Jews play in the processes of the modernization of Jaffa itself. <clears throat> Thus, the clock tower square is transformed into a space devoid of any historic political or cultural context, and nullifies the ambivalent characteristic forcing Israeli society to face the contradictions that construct its national identity. This is, as can be understood through the quotation that you see here, uh, um, that was, that was the, the, which is a quotation made by the mayor of Tel Aviv in a ceremony in, in 2016, this transformation did not assist and helping to promote a dialogue between the conflicting narratives that construct the urban space and Israeli identity, but rather further extenuated the dichotomous relations between Jaffa and Tel Aviv and between the contested relations they represent. So in conclusion, I would ask professionals who contend with different aspects of heritage, the presentation of this case study challenges us to continue striving to strive to find ways through which heritage may be used in order to create actual bridges between contested identity groups in society. Thank you very much. Thank you.